It was one of those games for the LA Kings. We'll explain and talk about Victor Arvidsson and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. your first listen every day we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts we would love for you to leave us a positive comment on apple Podcasts. if you're a fan of the show and we're also on youtube please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content i'm eddie garcia your host of locked on la kings i've worked in sports media for the past 30 years 20 plus years at the fox sports radio network also co-host of the puck podcast a weekly nhl review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate la kings fan for over 30 years the la kings started their three-game road trip in st louis against the blues on wednesday night looking to keep some momentum going from their solid performance in their previous game against the new york islanders as far as the lineup in this one for the la kings it was pretty much exactly what we expected the same lineup from the game before against new york obviously that was a great performance so no need to change things up except for the goaltender was different David Riddick got the shutout win against the Islanders. This time, the Kings go back to Cam Talbot, who has been sharing the load, or should say carrying the load of late. And the Kings uh, did go uh, to continue with that 11-7 lineup with 11 forwards and 7 defensemen. And Arthur Kaliev, again, was the lone scratch in this one for the LA Kings. Now, if you missed the game, we'll give you a quick recap and then give you our thoughts on the game. And despite coming out strong, the Kings found themselves down one nothing after the first period, the Blues scoring a goal in the final minutes of the opening period. And then St. Louis would extend that lead to 2 nothing by scoring a goal in the opening minutes of the second period. In the third, Blues made it 3 nothing before LA's Adrian Kempe would at least spoil the shutout bid of St. Louis goalie Jordan Bennington. Kempe getting his 21st of the year, Drew Doughty and Alex Turcott picking up the assists. Unfortunately, the Kings could not get any closer and they would fall to the St. Louis Blues by a score of 3-1. to one. Kings drop to 33-21-11 and 11 on the season. We'll update you where the Kings are in the Pacific Division standings and the Western Conference playoff picture coming up. As far as the game stats in this one against St. Louis, again, Kings fall 3-1. to one. Shots on goal favored the Kings 41-30. to 30. As far as power plays, each team was over 2 Faceoffs favored the Kings 33 to 29. Block shots favored St. Louis 20 to 9. And hits favored the Kings 29 to 13. I take notes when I watch the Kings games so I don't forget anything. And in my notes, I wrote, quote, Kings doing a lot of good things that aren't resulting in anything good. End quote. If I was uh, using one word to describe the Kings game against the St. Louis Blues, that word would be frustrating. The Kings showed up for this game. The effort was there. The intensity was there. The execution not quite there, but I do have to give credit where credit is due. I won't go so far as to say Blues goalie Jordan Bennington stole this game, but he was the difference. Bennington stopped all the shots that he should have stopped, and he just looked early on like he was on his game. Now, I wouldn't call Bennington an elite goalie, but he has been a goaltender that has led a team to a Stanley Cup title. Um, he is very good at times. At times, he's just okay, but he has performed on the biggest stage, so it's not like you can't say that when it's been necessary, uh, he has been clutch at times throughout his career. Still, based on the way the two teams played, this one kind of felt like it should be like a 2-2 game decided in overtime or a shootout, but that was not the case. Uh, As for head coach Jim Hiller in this one, uh, talked about the way the Kings started the game and how it was, as I said, frustrating. Uh, The Kings interim coach said, quote, that was disappointing because we thought we came out ready to play. We were, you know, in and around the net. I don't know how much we tested them, but we were around. Pucks were just kind of rolling past, so it felt we were going pretty good. And then, yeah, to have to come in down one nothing, that's not a great feeling. Again, talking about playing a solid first period, coming out strong, and not only not having something to show for it, 
but trailing on the scoreboard as well. As far as the positives to take away from this game, the pluses, I think when you're looking team-wise, um, again, the Kings, I think for the most part, played up to the standard that they need to play going forward to get in that playoff mode as we go down the stretch. This time of the year is when teams know, especially teams like LA, they know they're going to make the playoffs, right? So it's not really worrying about, I don't even think necessarily who they're going to play or, or what position they're going to be in, but it's about, again, ramping it up, playing your best at the best time, get into the postseason, the second season, and see if you can make something happen. And the last two games, I think, are positive. Certainly the previous game against the Islanders was definitely a positive. And I think for the most part, this game, I think, is still a positive. Again, when you're looking at how is the team playing? Can they keep this going? The effort, the you know, the, the, they talk about like Jim Fox likes to talk about that five men connected when they're on the ice. I think there was a lot of that for the Kings in this game. But again, Jordan Bennington uh, and then the Kings, you know, not finishing when they've had a few opportunities. And we've seen that throughout the year at times. The Kings, sometimes it's not that they're not getting the chances. Sometimes it's just that they're not finishing the chances. And they didn't get a ton of grade A scoring chances in this one. Um, but again, you know, you put a lot of shots on goal like they did, and usually that leads to good things. But Jordan Bennington was part of the reason why it didn't in this one. So the Kings have played, I think, one very, very good game and one pretty good game, and they need to keep it going. Uh, you need to try and keep momentum going forward. And, uh, you know, at, at, on the one hand, every game is in and of itself an individual test, but Again, want to want to string these types of performances together, and when you do that, good things are normally going to resort as far result as far as the scoreboard and getting two points. Uh, up next, the Kings have uh, an opponent, the Chicago Blackhawks, one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, again, the standard needs to keep being what it is, and the same thing in their next game, Saturday against the Stars. So they're going to play one of the worst teams in the league. They're going to follow it up against one of the best teams in the league. But regardless, the way the Kings come out and play, the way they start, the way that they show energy, the way that they defend as a team. Now, again, the finish, the, the scoring touch, that kind of thing can be improved upon. But a lot of those other things need to stay the same. So hopefully that's the case for the Kings. Also a positive individually, I would look at Adrian Kempe. Uh, he had the only goal in the game against St. Louis, a put back of his own rebound, going hard to the net. Uh, you know, we know that he can score the skilled goals, but that was an effort goal. And he has looked to me to be 100% coming back from that upper body injury that cost him five games. He's got two goals in his three games back, um, goals now in consecutive games as well. So uh, Adrian Kempe, uh, his minutes do not look like they've been limited. And his play, as far as how he looks physically, certainly doesn't be doesn't seem to be limited. He's playing even strength. He's playing power plays, playing penalty kill. So good to have Adrian Kempe back looking good from the injury. And obviously they're going to need him to look like that going forward down the stretch. Negatives, uh, takeaways, minuses from this one. Um, team wise, the power play uh, 0 for 2 against St. Louis. And when you're having a hard time generating good scoring chances, power plays are a place where you need to take advantage of that. And the Kings didn't do it, and they have continued to not do it of late. Hopefully, uh, they can get better when Victor Arvidsson returns. We'll talk more about that in a bit. But the Kings were, again, 0 for 2 against the Blues, now 0 for their last 10 on the power play. I believe that's four or five games where they have not scored a power play goal. So, and even, and even in, we've, it's talk, we've been talking about this, even when you do get a power play, you know, get some good chances, get some momentum generated offensively from the power play. But the Kings really don't seem to do much of that either which is very disappointing considering where the power play was a year ago and how good it was a year ago. Uh, I think there was a, maybe a little bit of overpassing by the Kings in this one, but that's a tough one. You know, on the one hand, you're facing a goalie who's on his game. So it makes sense that the routine shot probably isn't going to beat him. Uh, so you look to make that extra pass, but then you pass up on, on shots and, and you think, you know, the more shots you get on, the better chance you have for a rebound or a deflection. And heck, maybe it just goes off, uh, you know, one of the St. Louis players and goes in. Uh, but, you know, that usually happens. More shots to get on goal. But the, the Kings did have 41 shots on goal. So kind of hard to complain about the number of shots on goal. But I, there were some chances where I thought Bennington maybe was in their head a little bit and that they, they overpassed. 
I think individually you'd have to look at Cam Talbot. Now, he wasn't necessarily bad in that loss. He allowed three goals on 30 shots, but the one goal he did allow at the beginning of the game was a bad goal, a fairly routine wrist shot from the blue line, and it got through him somehow. Didn't look like he was really screened on it at all. So when you look across the ice and you see the other goalies on his game, you got to step up your game as well. And again, I don't think Cam Talbot was bad. I don't think he's necessarily the reason the Kings lost, but when it's a tight game like that, one goal can be huge. He allowed a bad goal. Jordan Bennington did not. And that was part of the reason why the Kings lost. So Kings now have 17 games left in the regular season, eight on the road, nine at home before the playoffs get underway. Uh, Kings need to keep showing uh, again, that mental toughness, bounce back, keep the effort there, but finish up on some of the execution when you have your opportunities. Got Chicago coming up next and then Dallas after that. Very important player could be returning soon. That is Victor Arvidsson. We're going to talk about him and what impact he has had and could have with the LA Kings. We'll do that more here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Do you love to make money, but also love to spend money? Well, don't we all? Uh, But now you can make money while you spend it every time you shop with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure that you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns about $256 a year. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much with Ibotta. You add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can either cash out in your bank account, get PayPal or gift cards, join over 50 million users that earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 for just trying Ibotta and using the code Locked On NHL when you register. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use the code Locked On NHL. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A, in the Google Play or App Store and use the code Locked On NHL. As you know, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March the 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the best Major League Baseball season preview coming exclusively on Locked On Sports Today. That is March the 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Be the first to get local insight from the baseball local experts from the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or free Amazon Fire TV channel apps. Uh, The LA Kings looking to get on track, of course, as they head into the playoffs, but the team still is not complete. Uh, There are injured forwards, Victor Arvidsson and Carl Grundstrom, still out due to injury. While both apparently are going to be back before the postseason, uh, obviously Victor Arvidsson is the one player that the Kings are really looking to get back and help out. Now, he's only played four games this season, but when you watch those four games, he certainly passed the eyeball test, in my opinion. He looked good. He looked like a difference maker. We know he's an elite player when he's healthy. He can make a difference. He's an above-average skater. He can finish. He can set up teammates equally well. He's creative on the ice. He makes defenders pay attention to him because of what he can do, and he's got very good hockey sense. Now, he can also be a help on the power play, especially because he's a right-handed shot on a team full of left-handed shots. And him being on a line likely with Philip Deneau and Trevor Moore means Kevin Fiala gets to move up or down the lineup and make the team more balanced from that regard as well. As well. Probably the, be on the third line with P.L. Dubois, you would think, but it gives the Kings options. Um, same goes with Victor Arvidsson helping out on the power play. So what do the numbers say? And I admit, Four games is a very small sample size. But like I said, it passes the eyeball test, I believe, when Victor Arvidsson is with the team. Is there any statistical evidence, though, that shows that Victor Arvidsson is a difference maker for the LA Kings, even if it is over just a four-game span? Well, the Kings on the season are averaging 3.02 goals per game. Right now, that's 20th in the NHL. In the four games that Victor Arvidsson played, 
the Kings were averaging 3.50 goals per game. If that total was averaged out over the season, that would be good enough for sixth best in the NHL. Now, the Kings are allowing 2.60 goals per game. That's third best in the NHL, so that's good. In the four games that Victor Arvidsson played, the Kings were allowing 1.75 goals per game. That would be far and away the best in the NHL if you spread that out over a season. There's no team in the NHL that's allowing less than two goals per game. Now, Victor Arvidsson isn't known for his defense necessarily, but you have a better offense. Uh, You have the puck more. The other team doesn't have the puck as much. So as the cliche goes, sometimes the best defense can be a good offense. On the power play, the Kings are at 21.6%. That is currently 16th in the NHL. With Victor Arvidsson in the lineup over those four games, the Kings went 4 for 11 with the man advantage. That's 36.4%. That would be number one in the NHL. Right now, the current top power play percentage is 29.2%, and that is by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, by the way, the Kings in the four games that Victor Arvidsson played in, they're 4 0. And I know it's a small sample size, but the eye test shows that Victor Arvidsson makes a difference. And even though it's a small sample size, the stats show that Victor Arvidsson makes a pretty big difference. So it's only natural to be excited about him returning again, which by all indications should be relatively soon. I think they're looking at some point after this road trip wraps up. So that would be sometime next week. Um, if all things go well. And if you're looking at the rest of the schedule, I would think at the very least that Victor Arvidsson should get 10 to 12 to 15 games in before the playoffs. So that should be enough time for him to get acclimated. We've, we've seen how quickly Adrian Kempe has returned, but Kempe only missed five games. Victor Arvidsson has only played in four games all season. So you can understand why the Kings would like to get him back a little bit sooner, let him get some games in, under his belt, and hopefully be ready to go full speed once the playoffs get going. Now, him returning is certainly a positive, but how much can the Kings really rely on him because of the injury issues? He has been a guy who has had injury issues throughout his career. Um, We know he's had two back surgeries since he's been an LA King, and the injury he suffered against the Columbus Blue Jackets was concerning. It was a non-contact injury. He was just skating, and then he felt something bad. So when Arvidsson returns... We're all going to be excited, but we're also all going to have to hold our breath every time he gets on the ice because you never know if something's going to happen. Um, Now, after this season, Arvidsson is an unrestricted free agent. That's both good and bad for the Kings in the moment. The good news is is that Arvidsson is going to be very motivated to show off his skills because he's playing for a contract for next season. Now, teams will look at what he's done in his past, and he's only, I believe, 30 years old, so he's still relatively young. He's got some good hockey left in him, but you also have to take into account his availability, right? The the cliche is the best ability is availability sometimes, and when Victor Arvidsson plays, he's a very good player, but he's been in and out of the lineup. Again, he's had the two back surgeries, so it's that absolutely goes into and, and you take into account when you're looking at getting a player. It's kind of part of the reason why I think the Kings were willing to part with a guy like Gabe Velarde, who, by the way, if you aren't paying attention, is injured again now for the Winnipeg Jets. So Arvidsson, he's got to be motivated to show that he's okay because he wants that contract after the season and and get the most he can wherever that's going to be. But he's also going to be going all out and you worry about the injury situation as well. Um, So, yeah, I mean, He's going to be motivated. That's good. Hopefully he's healthy because you got to feel like he's probably going to push it when he gets out there on the ice again because he wants to prove I'm okay, I'm ready to go, and uh, I uh, I want to get that contract after the season and have it be the best contract it could possibly be. If he's able to come back, play well at the end of the regular season, help the Kings maybe win a playoff series and play well as, as well, that's certainly going to help him going forward in trying to get paid uh, after this season. So regardless of how it all plays out, Victor Arvidsson could be a huge key for the Kings this postseason if he can stay healthy. And and by the way, I know the Kings uh, had this. I mean, you know, they the, the Kings had this philosophy: we're going to be okay as long as we're healthy. And that's a big if, right? But also with Victor Arvidsson's issues, 
it did seem like that should have been part of the equation for the Kings to look and add somebody at the trade deadline for some insurance. If Victor Arvidsson can't come back, adding a Tyler to Foley, for example, seemed like that would have been uh, something that you would take into account because of Arvidsson's health, but that did not happen. And the Kings are again, keeping their fingers and toes crossed that if, and when Victor Arvidsson returns, he can show what he showed in that small sample size that he can be a difference maker for the LA Kings this postseason. So what is the fallout from the Kings losing in St. Louis last night as far as where they are in the standings and the playoff picture? We'll update you on that next year on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April the 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April the 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information, claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Marketing Research. Investment involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. The LA Kings face the Chicago Blackhawks Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast to your LA Kings with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search LA Kings. I did see that this game is going to be broadcast on the NHL network. I'm not sure if that's exclusive or if the game is going to be broadcast locally. So if you have the NHL network, uh, that could be an option for you to watch it. If you don't, then you may have to listen on the Sirius XM app. Uh, let's check in on the standings in the Pacific Division and the Western Conference playoff picture coming out of last night's action. Edmonton Oilers are in second in the Pacific with 83 points. They crushed the Washington Capitals last night, 7-3. to L.A. does not get any points, obviously, with the regulation loss to St. Louis, so they're still at 77 points, six points back of the Oilers for second place in the Pacific and home ice advantage in a potential playoff matchup with the Oilers. Nashville... Uh, picked up a win again. They have uh, points in 13 straight games, so they're red hot. They've got 80 points, but again, it really only matters to the LA Kings if the Kings fall out of that third spot in the Pacific. It doesn't matter how many points Nashville has. If the Kings stay third place, then they will meet the Oilers in the playoffs. Uh, Vegas has 77 points, same as the Kings. Uh, the Kings obviously could not get any separation from the Golden Knights last night with a win or an overtime or shootout loss. So again, the Kings and Golden Knights still tied, but LA does have the tiebreaker at the moment. Uh, St. Louis gets the win over the Kings, so they get 71 points. Uh, they need as many wins as they can down the stretch. So that was a big win for them. Still those six points out of a wild card spot. Uh, Minnesota also with 71 points and six points out of a wild card spot on the season. If the playoffs started today, it would be the LA Kings against the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs. Now, games coming up tonight of interest for the Kings. The Golden Knights are going to be in action up in Calgary against the Flames. If Vegas wins tonight or loses an overtime or a shootout, they would overtake the Kings and reclaim that third spot in the Pacific. That would knock L.A. down to the number two wildcard spot in the West. Now, if the Golden Knights lose in regulation, L.A. would remain in third place in the Pacific. If the Kings drop to that number two wildcard spot, it would be the Kings against the Vancouver Canucks in the first round of the playoffs. And if I'm being honest, I think I'd rather play the Canucks in the first round of the playoffs, even though it would mean matching up against the team with the most points in the NHL during the regular season. But I think in the playoffs, a lot of it is about matchups. And I think the Kings match up pretty well against the Canucks. They played them twice. Uh, the Kings rolled in one of those games uh and won five to one and then the other game they lost in overtime so yeah I, I i look it would be sweet to beat the oilers in the playoffs and get some redemption after they've knocked us out two times in a row and that would almost feel like even more 
than just a first round win to get, you know, get some revenge on that team. But I think if I had my choice and I don't, and we don't, uh, I think I'd rather face the Canucks in the first round and all the pressure is going to be on them. The Kings are going to go in with nothing to lose. And remember the last time the Canucks were the number one seed, the president's trophy winner and the Kings faced him as an eight seed LA won and went on to win the Stanley cup. So that history is on our side as well. I did want to mention real quick, the Ontario rain had their eight game winning streak come to an end last night. They lost two one to San Diego, but a good run by the rain. Hopefully they can start a new winning streak here coming up soon. For you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch Locked on LA Kings every day coming up on Friday, we're going to preview that Kings-Blackhawks game and, of course, have another Kings fan feedback show. You can get your thoughts in on what the Kings did or didn't do at the trade deadline. Uh, you can also talk about who you'd rather face in the playoffs, the Oilers or the Canucks or anything else that's on your mind involving RLA Kings. If you want to send an email, uh, there's still time. Locked on Eddie at gmail.com is the email address, E-D-D-I-E. And we always uh, welcome your comments uh, if you're watching on YouTube in the comments section as well. It helps the algorithm, I'm told. Uh, we'd also love for you to stay interactive with the show by following us on social media, X, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thanks, as always, for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you on Friday. And as always, go Kings go.